My Royal Rogues, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the Royal Rogue, and today we will be covering King Charles breaking one long-standing tradition at the coronation and Harry being dumped from a royal residence. But first, we got memes, and you might remember that I'm in charge of the campaign to make Harry dust worthy. But it's not as simple as just dumping a big pile of dirt on his head, so I have devised a strategy. Given that Meghan has had so much success with all the hats that she has chosen to wear at those events of her really short royal life, because if she was in charge of the TIG, then she must know her way around fashion, right? So that's how we are going to overhaul Harry's brand image. Starting with a classic, the poop emoji hat. One that helps highlight the color of his eyes and goes very well with everything that comes out of his mouth. But another good option is the marshmallow hat. Simple, easy to wear. He can even use it to draw with crayons whenever he wants. I've heard that drawing is a great therapy, and since Harry collects therapies like Pokemon cards, then it will be great for him. Just don't eat the crayons, Harry. But let's not forget the privacy hat. Thanks to South Park, it has become an icon of whining, of self-indulgence in the woes of royal fame. And from that angle, it looks like a winner, so more power to him. But definitely, the hat that is going to work best for him is the Meghan Markle signature yacht hat. The most versatile. Just like Meghan on those yacht trips. So we kickstart today's episode with very juicy news. Prince Harry stayed with friends on a UK trip after King Charles kicked him out of royal residence. And this is according to JV News. During his visit, the Duke did not meet with the King or the Prince of Wales after he and Meghan Markle were asked to vacate Frogmore Cottage earlier this year. Royally obsessed podcast hosts Roberta Fiorito and Rachel Bowie discussed where the royal stayed while in the UK. One of the big questions everyone is asking is where is Harry staying, Fiorito said. Fox News has the scoop that he is staying with friends in London. I also saw he could be staying with... Princess Eugenie, obviously, they're very close. It is a big question because he's out of Frogmore Cottage at the end of March. That timing would also work out. Well, more than kicked out, I would say that he was never granted a room in the first place. It's not that Charles does not want Harry around, but you can imagine that the king doesn't want any sort of unnecessary frictions that the ginger winger could cause around the palace. And this is part of this royal drama all the time. The difference between the brothers, uh, that it's not just a rift or because they have differences. This is about their behavior and especially how one of them honors traditions and the memory of those who are not around anymore, at least in physical presence. That's why I want to bring attention to this heartbreaking story behind this photo as King Charles and William finished job on Queen's behalf. In May 2021, one year before the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, Elizabeth II launched an initiative to plant more trees, which she named the Queen's Green Canopy. Throughout her long life, tree planting was an important part of her many royal duties and it was an activity she felt particularly enthusiastic about. Sadly, she was unable to see the incredible impact of the project due to her passing in 2022. To pay tribute to his late mother, King Charles, along with his son, Prince William, planted one of the final trees of the project, an acer, in the gardens of Sandringham House. But while some initiatives flourish, some traditions are being phased out. No coronets, as peers told to dress down for coronation by Buckingham Palace. Members of the House of Lords traditionally wear a special coronation robe, but peers have been told to wear their usual parliamentary airmen. Peers attending King Charles' coronation next month have been asked to dress down to match the atmosphere of the pair back ceremony. Members of the House of Lords traditionally wear a special coronation robe for the occasion made of a scarlet velvet with a color of white fur and a coronet that determines their rank in the British peerage. But it is understood that the more relaxed dress code is designed to fit with the monarch's desire for a pair-back ceremony that reflects public attitudes toward the royal family and a desire to avoid excess during the cost of living crisis. And reactions did not wait. According to Taz, this is beginning to suck. Every day something is being cancelled. 
I was looking forward to seeing something in my lifetime as huge as Queen Elizabeth's coronation. I understand tweaks and changes need to be made, but this is disappointing. At Queen Elizabeth's coronation in 1953, peers were allowed to wear a cap of maintenance, a red velvet cap lined with ermine in place of the coronet. In an interview in 2018, the late Queen revealed many attendees had hidden sandwiches in their coronets in preparation for the three-hour ceremony. Well, that sounds like a great strategy in my opinion, and don't forget that Paddington Bear is also a huge advocate of such fashion and cuisine combinations. I understand King Charles' intention of uh, modernizing the monarchy and have a slimmed down, more efficient coronation, and, well, maybe he's being told that so much pomp and circumstances no longer fit in these modern times. But I disagree. Well, maybe I do agree on not using the gold state coach, which even Queen Elizabeth said that it's not meant to, well, actually be used as a coach. But if not even the king is going to use such historic vehicle, at least they should consider renting it to, let's say, music professionals that need a fully pimped ride for special occasions. But what I don't understand is that many countries of the Commonwealth have traditions, and many of those traditions involve spectacular dresses for both men and women. Because in many ways, you cannot act like there is not a hierarchy. And maybe that's what King Charles is afraid of. That's why, according to Tom Bauer, he hasn't decided yet what is he going to wear the day of the coronation. It seems that he's going to wear a military uniform. So what's your opinion about this? How much pomp and circumstance do you want for the coronation? I would love to read it in the comments. Meanwhile, picture this, Meghan Markle is named top entertainment podcast host for Archetypes. I thought this was some kind of uh, April Fool's joke, but I forgot that the Montecito duo are fools year-round, but the only people that they can actually fool are their own Sussex squad. Today, the Gracie Awards announced that Meghan was named top entertainment podcast host for her work. Work? The Graces recognize exemplary programming created by women, for women, and about women in all facets of media and entertainment. Well, it seems that Meghan wants to stay on top of mind, but the real deal might be this one. Make a mark. Meghan Markle pays near £90,000 to Michelle Obama's express chief sparking guess about political ambitions. The cash paid by the Archwell Foundation to Katie McCormick Levels PR company has a spark fresh speculation over Meghan's political ambitions. Ms. Lelyville served as former First Lady Michelle Obama's press secretary from 2007 to 2011. She has also been a PR for Hillary Clinton and former presidential candidate John Kerry, meaning she has deep ties to high-level Democrats. The money was for strategic support for social impact PR. The business boasts of its decades of dynamic experience with influential leaders and said it was the company that global leaders turned to to navigate challenges with reputational, political, philanthropic, legal, and financial lenses. Now, I'm going to tell you something. No matter how much PR you pay for, no matter who you hire for PR, no matter if you get Edward Bernays to rise from his grave and spin the world's narrative for yourself, you will go absolutely nowhere if you just work one hour a week. Just saying. And before we say goodbye, I want to share with you a reflection by Tribes Britannia on Twitter, which I absolutely agree with. King Charles III visits to Germany has proven something us royal fans have known for a while. Politicians and despots are waging wars and letting down people all over the world. The only people who don't let us down and always turn up is the royal family. They're a beacon of stability. That is something that helps us navigate these uncertain times. Because we need more families and organizations that remind us that principles, morals, and ethics are the true pillars of humanity. My Roger Rogues, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Roger Rogue, and remember, much love and bliss.